it's going to be localhost port 8888 and then we have tested it now we can make some changes let's say we want to go into not terminal textmate I'm going to say update uh, changes save that um, I might you know I might throw a picture into the repo or something you know just make some changes and then I can go back to this terminal where I'm within the HC docs folder um, if I want to check the status it looks like I have an untracked file and I've modified the PHP file to say that updated change or whatever so I'm just gonna do a git commit um, I believe you can do dash a capital A which is adding all the changes and then dash M and then say update uh, two you might want to be a little bit more specific than that Oops. Must be a lowercase a. Yeah. So we add all our changes. So I don't have to run the git add all command. This kind of does both of them in the same command. Again, whatever. Um, so we've added our changes and we've made the commit out of them. And then we just push it back to origin. So back on our local host, you can see we've updated our changes. This, again, we aren't on a live server yet. Um, but if we go to GitHub, we reload, we haven't made any changes, there's not that picture yet. So again, we have to push back to origin, so we're just going to do a git push. Um, and that should push it back to GitHub. Might take a second. And we can reload. Well, I guess it got the change. I forgot to, I don't know why it's not adding that file. I'm just going to add that real quick. Um, so winter.jpg uh, and then git commit m and then just a git push and now we should have all of our changes and uh, you can see all of our commits within github. So yeah it looks like it's added the picture or whatever uh, and we're good to go. We're going to be setting up access to our host skater account and in this tutorial, we're going to set up access to our HostGator account so we can save our changes or pull our changes from GitHub and deploy them to live. And first, we need to enable access to HostGator. And you should have gotten an email from HostGator when you set them up. You might have to call whoever your hosting provider is if you're not using HostGator. Um, I'll show you how to do it with HostGator. Yours is probably similar if you have access um, just call them up and be like, hey, can you enable SSH access or shell access to um, my computer or to my server? You, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, so you should have received email something like this. And with HostGator, you want to log into the billing system. Um, so copy this link here. And you're going to use a password here. This is kind of just a sample, um, but whatever. So here's your login. I'm going to skip ahead after I log in with my actual credentials. So once you're logged in, you want to scroll down to the bottom and you can say view hosting package. Well, here's some of the information I was trying to hide. Probably block it out again. But right here you can see enable shell access. We're going to click on that and it might take a few seconds to enable, but it says, you know, shell access has been enabled to your account. So we're good to go there. Now we can actually SSH into our host or into our uh, HostGator account. So what we're actually going to do is open up a new terminal window. Uh, again, control N. And we're going to SSH into our server. So if you see now, if I do an LS, it's on like my main directory. Got a bunch of junk in there. Um, so I'm going to hit control L to clear that out. And I'm actually going to log in now to my HostGator account into my HostGator server. And you do that by typing out, if I bring back this cheat sheet, uh, you actually want to type in your username and uh, your domain name when you SSH in. And it will be on port 2222, 2222, yes, that's correct. Um, so we, we actually do SSH-P for port, and it's going to be 2222, and then it's your username and then your domain name. So just go ahead and copy that, and then hit at symbol, and we're going to say at this um, copy paste and hit enter and they'll ask for your okay well it's refusing access because I'm using a fake one um, but I'm gonna put in my real one again and then uh, we'll get back to you 
I wish I could uh, just, you know, trust everyone on the internet that watches these videos, but cause then I won't have to edit out my passwords and stuff. But anyways, after you, oops. After you do your SSH, you'll get something like this. Um, well, actually, it'll, it'll ask you for your HostGator password, um, which would be this. If you go over here, um, you know, I don't have anything on the server, but please don't hack my server. Um, that's my username. That's my password or, or my domain name that we're going to be using. Um, so I'm actually in my server now. If I LS, you can see this is all my server stuff. Um, which is awesome, right? But I've already linked up my computer to my server, so I didn't have to put in a password. And that's what I'm going to teach you guys right now if you guys want to be able to SSH into your actual HostGator server without having to type your password every time. Because generally, server passwords are pretty secure, and so you're going to have to go to wherever you saved that password and then put it in. It's kind of a hassle. So what we're going to do now is actually... Um, do what I, I just said where you don't have to type in your password every time. So what we need to do is we need to open a different terminal window. I'm going to go back to this one down here, control L. And this is again on my local system. If I LS, it's, you know, wherever, wherever this is. It's on my computer somewhere. This isn't on my server. But what we're going to do is we're going to copy that SSH key again within our, you know, dot SSH file on our computer and we're going to paste that into our server um, as you can see here our server also has an SSH directory if I cd dot um, SSH into that and ls it has an authorized key folder um, so any any uh, SSH keys we can attach to this file right here and then we'll be able to go into our server without having to type a password again I, I know this setup is kind of boring but it's awesome once you have everything linked up uh, so thanks for you know sticking with this video. Anyways, that's what we're gonna do next. If you guys don't have this authorized key, um, go into your HostGator account and just create a file, or you can do a like you know a Linux command to make a file and just label it authorized keys, authorized underscore keys. Um, but that's what we're gonna do next is we're gonna copy our local SSH key and add it to our server's authorized keys so we can log in and the easiest way is to go to our website and just copy this command paste it um, and as you can see here what it's doing is it's copying our local uh, cat is pretty much like copying copy our local SSH key the public one again remember it's the public one that we want to give to our server and then after that which is a pipe after that, we're going to log into our server. Um, again, change your name and your domain name. And then after we do that, after we log into our server with SSH, we're going to take whatever we copied and we're going to paste it into that file or append it to that file. So that's kind of what the command means. Um, after you hit enter, you're going to have to type your password again to your server. Um, again, you know, pretty simple, but it's this password. You're going to have to type in, uh, and then you'll be able to log in like I did, where you don't have to type in your password every time you SSH into your server. Uh, so that's what that is. And I promise this is the last thing that we need to do is just pull in our, our GitHub account, um, which might be pretty easy. So what we're actually going to do is just hit CD if you haven't already. We're in our main directory, and then CD into this www file and ls, and this is where our site is. Um, yeah, it looks like there's a bunch of stuff in there. So I'm actually going to do rm.rf. And don't do this on your system because this is going to wipe out everything within this directory pretty much. Uh, so, yeah. Um, let me do. Looks like I already had to get things set up on this. Um, but yeah, now I have nothing in this directory pretty much, just HT access. And again, I'm on bringbackdeals.com as the host name. So if I want to go over there, go into my domain, paste that. As you can see right now, it's kind of like, you know, 
nothing's there. It's actually showing the files I have on my server, which isn't that good. Uh, but that's that's where we're at right now. Well, actually, the easiest way to get this done to make sure this works for everyone because the other way might not work for everyone. Um, but we want to go down to our, our repo here, and you can see SSH clone or HTTPS clone. I'm actually going to go to this because it has a better success rate. I'm just going to copy that. You probably want to use SSH if you can, but if it's giving you errors, just use HTTPS. I don't want to answer a bunch of questions about you know, why it's messing up. Um, but then all we have to do is go into, again, our www folder and just do a git clone and then paste that link that they just uh, gave you. And now it's cloning it into a directory called test. Uh, so if we go back to our server and actually if you just do ls, you can see we have this new test directory. Um, so that's where the URL is. Uh, it's in test forward slash and you can see this is where our actual website was but what we want to do is we actually want to strip out this test directory move everything from the test directory back into this www directory and there's a pretty simple command uh, to do that but first we want to go into the directory so we're going to do test uh, and then we're in there and we're going to move everything to the previous directory or www directory and again this command is on our website if you want to copy and paste it but again it's moving everything into the previous directory um, so if you ls now there's gonna be nothing in the test directory so we're actually gonna change directories to the previous directory ls and as you can see everything has moved into this directory including the git repository uh, the index.php the winter um, all that stuff and now there's nothing in this text test directory so we might as well remove that with rm-rf uh, test and now our site is looking pretty good okay awesome uh, now now that we have everything set up it's gonna be super easy um, to make your changes so let me do a quick run through of you know how we can how quickly we can make our changes um, so let's go back to our local host here and I'm gonna open up uh, that textmate file or that index.php file and I'm also gonna echo out uh, you know image source equals uh, what was it um, image source equals what was that winter dot jpeg I think yes okay so that looks pretty good let's test this out on our local host first and we're like whoa that's awesome crazy that's sweet I wish our actual website looked like that because right now it's pretty lame but that picture is pretty bamf I don't actually want this update changes here so now I'm gonna save all my changes right because uh, MAMP is showing what our actual website looks like now which is pretty cool and now we want to push that back to GitHub. Um, so we're going to go into our directory again, cd forward slash applications, man forward slash ht docs, and then we're going to do a git commit uh, dash a, again, adding all of our changes that we've made. And then we're going to hit dit dash m for a message, and we're going to say updated uh, homepage. And there we go. We've made our commit. And now we need to push it back to github.com. Um, so we're just going to do git push, um, which is pushing it back to GitHub. And now we just need to uh, pull our changes into our server. So again, we're going to SSH into our server, but we already have our server uh, terminal window up here. So it's pretty easy to just keep both win windows open. And when you need to do something on the server, you go into the server, you go into where your git file is located, again www, and just do a git pull. And this is going to pull the information from the git repository on github.com. So we're just going to do our pull, and we're going to go back to our website, hit enter, and uh, we've made our changes. So it's pretty awesome. It's even better if, if you guys are using like a notepad program, it's even better if you use something like Aptana 
or Sublime, something like that. And you can also quickly uh, just throw in a framework within this htdocs folder on your local system as well, such as like Code Igniter or the Zend framework. And then you can push that to your website and you have a really powerful platform to start developing some awesome websites. And you have the flexibility of hosting um, on your local system and then pushing it to your live system very quickly, very easily. Um, so hopefully this helps you guys out. I know it's kind of a slow tutorial, it's really long, um, but please let me know if it helped you out, if it's what you're looking for, if you're just interested and you're like, whoa, that's pretty cool, or if you're like, you know, that was a waste of my time. But honestly, like, if you're going to get into web development, I think this is something that's pretty important, so I thought I'd take the time to make a tutorial. I'd appreciate it if you guys subscribe, like, share this video with your friends or your family or your enemies or your dog or your... Um, you know, the ice cream man or whatever, uh, because it definitely helps us out. And, and I, you know, I appreciate it anytime uh, someone's sharing, uh, you know, the hard work I put into these things. So, so thanks again, guys, for watching. And I hope to uh, check you guys out on a different video where we're going to learn something else that's awesome. Uh, thanks again, guys. See you later.